Hey folks, it's Greg and Janet with Strange RV Tours. Today we are in Dealey Plaza in Dallas, Texas, and we're going to be looking at Abraham Zapruder and the film that he shot of the JFK assassination. Now, Abraham Zapruder was a Ukrainian immigrant to the United States who established himself here and was very successful. He had an office right here in Dealey Plaza in the Daltex building, which is right here. And he had decided when he found out that the presidential motorcade with Kennedy was going to be going through Dealey Plaza, he decided to film it. He had an eight millimeter camera. And his reason for filming it was that, well, first of all, he was a big President Kennedy fan. And he wanted to kind of create a historic moment for his family so his family could see that he got to see the president in the future. So he decided to film it. Well, the morning of the motorcade, it had rained. And so he ended up deciding, no, I'm not going to film it after all. And he came here to work. I'm not sure which floor his, his office was in here, but he had a, like I said, had a company where he would create apparel or clothing. When he got to work, one of the girls that worked for him kind of scolded him and told him he needed to go back home and get his camera that he was going to miss his chance to film the president so he made the trip back home went ahead got his camera it the the morning had cleared up and it looked like it was going to be a nice day he came back to his office here and he decided that he was going to film it from his office window but then changed his mind and decided that he would find a more suitable place so let's go over where that is so Abraham Zapruder was looking for a better place to film the motorcade and he came across this pedestal right here, right here, basically on top of the grassy knoll. And if you look, we are literally on top of the grassy knoll. This is the grassy knoll right here. And I'm going to get up on top of there and show you his view. Now. I'm standing where Abraham Sapruder was filming the motorcade. The motorcade came down Houston Street and made the more than 90 degree turn onto Elm Street there. The first shot that hit President Kennedy was right where this, where I'm pointing now, right where this X is in the center of the road. And then the fatal shot was right here where this X is in the middle of the road. Now these trees were much smaller at the time, but Abraham Sapruder, Sapruder had vertigo and didn't want to stand up here so his assistant from his office held his coattails from the ground to steady him while he was up here on this pedestal the triple the triple underpass or overpass is right over here and the picket fence is behind me Now, as Abraham Zapruder was walking back towards his office in the Daltex building, this is the Texas School Book Depository right here. When he was walking back towards his office building, the first person that he encountered was a man named Harry McCormick, who was a reporter for the Dallas Morning News. Now, Harry McCormick had noticed that Zapruder had been filming the assassination. So, he told Abraham Zapruder that he, he had a friend, uh, Mr. Sorrells, who worked with the Secret Service in the Dallas Division, and that they should go see him. So Abraham Zapruder agreed to meet with the two gentlemen at his office. When Sorrells and McCormick showed up at his, at his office, he agreed to give the film footage to Sorrells as long as it was used only in the investigation of the assassination. Now they had to find a place to get it developed. So the three men went about floor, four large blocks, I guess it would be south, to where the Dallas Morning News building was in hopes that they could develop the film. They couldn't develop the film at the Dallas Morning News. They didn't have the right equipment, so they went next door to the WFAA News and TV office. And while they were trying to develop the film there, Abraham Sapruder did a short interview on WFAA TV. 
Well, it turns out they couldn't develop it there either. They didn't have the right type of machinery, I guess. So later that afternoon, Sorrels, McCormick, and Zapruder were accompanied by a police car and taken over to um, Love Field. Across from Love Field was where Eastman Kodak's office was. And Kodak did have the ability to process the film. Once the film was processed, Abraham Zapruder kept an original, one copy, and gave two copies to the Secret Service. Two days later, Abraham Zapruder sold the rights to publish the film to Life Magazine for $50,000, $25,000 of which he gave to the family of J.D. Tippett, who was a police officer who was killed after the assassination. It's believed that Oswald had a hand in that. From that point, the film kind of disappeared. You know, they had stills come up in Life magazine and they did an expose on it, but nobody got to see the real film for 12 years. 12 years later, in 1975, Geraldo Rivera received a copy of the Zapruder film and played it for the first time on national TV on his TV show, Good Night America. And that was the first time that anybody got to see the horrific film. And that film today is the most watched film in the history of the world. 26.6 seconds long. And even with the vantage point that Zapruder had, you still can't tell for sure whether the shots came from the front or the back. Now, Robert Gordon, who is a film expert, film and photography expert, I guess had taken the film and cleaned it up. The original film is very grainy, and every time a shot was heard, Zapruder's hand would shake like, like this. Robert Gordon was able to take and fix the film so that it looks cleaner, and we have a better view of what actually happened that day. Now, in 1999, the government settled with the Zapruder family and gave them $16 million plus interest for basically forcing them to hand over the, the film footage that their father had taken. And they took um, and gave the copyrights of the film to the sixth floor museum which is located inside of the texas school book depository so they have copies of the footage and they also own the copyrights now to it which is a very generous thing to do I, I i feel like the family probably felt like that film belonged to the united states the people of the united states as much as it did their father Strange RV tours will take you places With Greg and Janet's smiling faces You might see a crazy flavored soda review Or some tips to fit your RV too So come along, won't you join us, friend As we discover what's around the bend Just sit right back in your easy chair Strange RV Tours is on the air Strange RV Tours is on